today students we are doing part 1 from the general science textbook lesson 4 for standard 7 nutrition in living organisms this video was made just for you do remember to like share and subscribe nutrition in living organisms now we know that living organisms include plants and animals so today we are going to learn about nutrition in plants and animals now do you all recall children what is malnutrition yes malnutrition occurs when all the nutrients that the body needs are not obtained in the proper proportions from the diet and which are the ways to prevent malnutrition so by having a balanced diet we can prevent malnutrition so what is balanced diet a diet containing adequate quantities of all nutrients is called a balanced diet now let's understand about nutrition in detail now some life processes go on continuously in living organisms isn't it we know in our bodies itself there are certain processes in our body which are called the life processes which go on continuously our digestion of food okay so it goes on continuously breathing okay so circulation of gases carbon dioxide oxygen goes on continuously in our body so also a heart pump, uh, pumps continuously from 24/7 continuously it is pumping so all these life processes go on continuously in all living organisms and substances which are digested and assimilated for obtaining energy for their growth and health of our body are called food stuffs so what is assimilation so whatever food we eat that is digested and assimilated by our body that is it is taken broken down and the nutrients from the food is taken by our body for obtaining energy so to get the energy and not only energy but for the growth growth of the body growth of the various cells and tissues and for fighting our disease for the health of our body so all these things that we take substances that we take are called food stuffs and we get several types of nutrients from food stuffs so there are various nutrients that we get now nutrients can be classified into two types namely macronutrients and micronutrients so the nutrients that we get from the food that we eat are divided into two parts which is called which are the macronutrients and micronutrients now let's study about them in detail now nutrients like carbohydrates proteins and fats are required in large quantities okay so our body requires carbohydrates proteins and fats in large quantities so these are my macronutrients and minerals and vitamins are required in smaller quantities so they are called micronutrients now let's understand about nutrition in detail now what is nutrition the process of taking in and using the food which takes place in living organisms is called nutrition so living organisms like i told you include plants and animals so this process of taking in food is called nutrition now why is there for need for nutrition let's study that now nutrition is needed by our body for these four reasons and they are to supply energy required for doing the work now we know that our body does so much of work isn't it so not only our body it is uh, among all the living organisms plants also require a lot of energy to do so many other functions that the plants does so so for the energy uh, nutrition is required now for growth and development of the body isn't it our bodies are constantly growing constantly developing and to dam to replace the damaged cells and repair tissues so uh, whichever the cells are damaged our body is growing so cells and tissues are growing so it has to replace some of the damaged tissues so for that it requires nutrition and to fight diseases our body has to be healthy our body should be able to fight the various diseases so therefore for all these various reasons our body requires the nutritions now nutritions again are divided into two parts those are called the autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition now what are autotrophic nutrition some organisms can produce their own food and thus nourish themselves 
this is called autotrophic nutrition so which is the best example of autotrophic nutrition plants so plants can produce their own food and nourish themselves so therefore they are called autotrophic they don't depend on any other things for food but there are organisms which depend on other organisms that is which includes plants and animals there are some plants that do not produce their own food they depend on other organisms for their food not only other plants but other animals also same way is the animals animals depend on plants as well as other animals for food so such organisms plants and animals are called heterotrophic nutrition now let's learn more about autotrophic plants that is plants that can produce their own food now can you tell how do plants produce their own food do you know how do plants produce their own food of course you have studied about it isn't it so let's recollect everything that we have studied now plants also need food for their growth so plants are living things and they need food they can produce their own food so with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll plants make their food in the leaves using water and nutrients from the soil and carbon dioxide from the air and this process is called photosynthesis so here we can see that in the presence of sunlight and with the help of carbon dioxide the plants take in all the nutrients that is water mineral salts from the soil okay and it is transported by the stem to the leaves and the leaves have chlorophyll in them so with the help of chlorophyll they are able to produce the food and store it so that is the whole process of producing this food is called photosynthesis okay so this is the chemical equation of it carbon dioxide is taken in by the plants as well as water and nutrients and in the presence of sunlight so the chlorophyll is able to convert the water and the nutrients into food glucose and oxygen is given out so this is the chemical equation of this whole process that is goes on now plants convert light energy into chemical energy and store it in the form of food so how are they able to do this photosynthesis is light light that is our sunlight so that sunlight that is an energy so that is called the light energy is converted into chemical energy so follow this picture as i explain to you now what do plants do water minerals salts are absorbed by the roots from the soil okay so the roots that is the function of the roots they take all the water the minerals and the salts so that forms a nutrition okay they absorb it from the soil and the stem transports them to the leaves so that is the function of the stems to transport these nutrients that is water uh, the minerals and the salts from the soil from the roots to the to the various parts and that is to the leaves and what do the leaves do the leaves have microscope microscopic openings called stomata so microscopic means very very minute very tiny very small we can't see it with our naked eyes if you just pick up the leaf and you see you'll not be able to see it but yes if uh, have you seen when we you know try to um, uh, uh, dry the leaves and all that sometimes we will be able to see that so they are very minute microscopic openings called stomata through which they take in the carbon dioxide from the air so we know that plants absorb carbon dioxide and in return give out oxygen so therefore they take the carbon dioxide and the chloroplast okay present in the leaves contain chlorophyll so this is the chloroplast if you can see the picture given alongside so this is the chloroplast it contains chlorophyll so chlorophyll with the help of sunlight water minerals okay and salts the chlorophyll is able to convert it into food so which absorbs sunlight helping to convert carbon dioxide and water into food and in the process oxygen is given out so this is how the whole photosynthesis the process of photosynthesis that is how plants are able to produce their food so this is the process that goes on now besides leaves so not only leaves besides leaves photosynthesis takes place in some other parts like the green stems too as they contain chlorophyll so the green stems also have chlorophyll in them so they also can produce food and they can store the food so now the year is 
uh, an activity that you have to do find out how does photosynthesis occur in dark red or purple colored leaves as in, isn't it we have seen so many types of leaves okay so we see uh, red and purple leaves also so how do you think they prepare their food we know that we just learnt that only the green pigment okay which is called the chlorophyll with that help only plants are able to produce their food but what about the plants that have dark red or purple colored leaves what happens to them find it out and to check your answers you could visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com you'll get the link in the description box below now let's study about how plants are able to transport this nutrition that is the nutrients that is water mineral and salts that they take from the roots to the various parts of the plant now let's understand that now take a pumpkin stem having two or three leaves cut it under water with a sharp blade now take some water in a conical flask and add seven or eight drops of ink to it now put the pumpkin stem vertically in that flask and observe the changes that takes place and uh, takes place in it and discuss them in the classroom so this is um, this is a little activity that you have to do you have to take a plant okay pump, uh, if preferable pumpkin stem and uh, with two or three leaves okay and put it in a flask or in a glass bottle or something add little water to it and add your ink to it or uh, you know you get the ink that you fill it in your pens so that is what you can put it and keep the plant in it and observe it daily okay so see it for one day two days and just observe what happens so this will help you to find out how the plant takes the uh, nutrients and how the uh, water and the minerals get transported because with the help of the blue ink or any other colored ink red ink also you can take so you will be able to you know see how the transportation takes place so with the help of the color now let's understand it so the transport system of plants consists of xylem and phloem so the xylem transports minerals and water from the root to all the aerial parts of the plant now root we know roots grow under the ground okay and the aerial part means those parts of the plant that grow above the ground so that is the work of the xylem then xylem is a tube like substance okay so it is tubular in form so with the help of this tube the plants okay what they do the roots they take the um, uh, take the nutrients that is water minerals salts okay from the soil and then they transport it to the various parts so that is the work of the xylem and what is the phloem does uh, the phloem transports the food that is glucose etc from the leaves to the other parts of the plant okay so that is the work of the phloem so where it is either consumed or stored so where consumed means it is either used by the plants or it is stored for further use so you can follow the picture given alongside so this is how uh, this is the section of the leaf okay and this is the section of the stem and this is the section of the root so this is how the transportation takes place of all the nutrients and whatever is a food material by the plants so though the plants have a transport system they do not have a separate digestive or excretory system so they do not they cannot digest their own food okay so they don't have a digestive system like what we do as well as the excretory system so what is excretory excretory is throwing out the unwanted parts of the uh, food item out of our body even we throw out excrete isn't it we excrete in the form of sweat urine and stools now uh, this is a little uh, activity that you'll have to do it find it out from the net okay what is chemosynthesis and which plants produce their food by chemosynthesis so uh, just find it out and you can check your answers on our website at uh, jkacademypro.com you'll get the link in the description box below now do you all recall children which are the different substances excreted by plants and why so you all know isn't it we have studied it in the previous lessons so do, do jot down the answers and again you all can visit our website and check your answers for the same to check your answers to all the textual questions and for the summary meanings other question answers 
and for free worksheets visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com you'll get the link in the description box below do remember to like share and subscribe this is end of part 1 for a complete lesson do watch part 1 2 and 3